It was so terribly cold. Snow was falling, and it was almost dark. Evening came on. The last evening of the year. In the cold and gloom, a poor little girl, bareheaded and barefoot, was walking through the streets. Of course, when she had left her house, she'd had slippers on, but what good had they been? They were very big slippers, way too big for her, for they belonged to her mother. The little girl had lost them running across the road, where two carriages had rattled by terribly fast. One slipper she'd not been able to find again, and a boy had run off with the other, saying he could use it very well as a cradle some day, when he had children of his own. And so the little girl walked on her naked feet, which were quite red and blue with the cold. In an old apron she carried several packages of matches, and she held a box of them in her hand. No one had bought any from her all day long, and no one had given her a scent. Shivering with cold and hunger, she crept along, a picture of misery, poor little girl. The snowflakes fell on her long fair hair, which hung in pretty curls over her neck. In all the windows, lights were shining, and there was a wonderful smell of roast goose, for it was New Year's Eve. Yes, she thought of that. In a corner, formed by two houses, one of which projected farther out into the street than the other, she sat down and drew up her little feet under her. She was getting colder and colder, but did not dare to go home, for she had sold no matches, nor earned a single cent, and her father would surely beat her. Besides, it was cold at home, for they had nothing over them but a roof through which the wind whistled, even though the biggest cracks had been stuffed with straw and rags. Her hands were almost dead with cold. Oh, how much one little match might warm her. If she could only take one from the box and rub it against the wall and warm her hands. She drew one out. Ratch! How it sputtered and burned. It made a warm, bright flame, like a little candle, as she held her hands over it but it gave a strange light. It really seemed to the little girl as if she were sitting before a great iron stove, with shining brass knobs and a brass cover. How wonderfully the fire burned! How comfortable it was! The youngster stretched out her feet to warm them too. Then the little flame went out. The stove vanished. She had only the remains of the burnt match in her hand. She struck another match against the wall. It burned brightly, and when the light fell upon the wall it became transparent like a thin veil, and she could see through it into a room. On the table a snow-white cloth was spread, and on it stood a shining dinner service. The roast goose steamed gloriously, stuffed with apples and prunes. And what was still better, the goose jumped down from the dish and waddled along the floor, with a knife and fork in its breast, right over to the little girl. Then the match went out, and she could see only the thick, cold wall. She lighted another match. Then she was sitting under the most beautiful Christmas tree, It was much larger and much more beautiful than the one she had seen last Christmas, through the glass door at the rich merchant's home. Thousands of candles burned on the green branches, and coloured pictures, like those in the print shops, looked down at her. The little girl reached both her hands towards them. Then the match went out. But the Christmas lights mounted higher, She saw them now as bright as stars in the sky. One of them fell down, forming a long line of fire. Now someone is dying, 
thought the little girl, for her old grandmother, the only person who had loved her, and who was now dead, had told her that when a star fell down, a soul went up to God. She rubbed another match against the wall. It became bright again, and in the glow, the old grandmother stood clear and shining, kind and lovely. Grandmother, cried the child, oh, take me with you. I know you will disappear when the match is burned out. You will vanish like the warm stove, the wonderful roast goose, and the beautiful big Christmas tree. And she quickly struck the whole bundle of matches, for she wished to keep her grandmother with her. And the matches burned with such a glow that it became brighter than daylight. Grandmother had never been so grand and beautiful. She took the little girl in her arms, and both of them flew in brightness and joy above the earth, very, very high, and up there was neither cold, nor hunger, nor fear. They were with God. But in the corner, leaning against the wall, sat the little girl, with red cheeks and smiling mouth, frozen to death on the last evening of the old year. The New Year's sun rose upon a little pathetic figure. The child sat there, stiff and cold, holding the matches, of which one bundle was almost burned. She wanted to warm herself, the people said. No one imagined what beautiful things she had seen, and how happily she had gone with her old grandmother into the bright new year. Thank you for listening. This has been The Little Match Girl by Hans Christian Andersen. Well, what a little tearjerker that was. A very sad little story, despite the hopeful messages there. Um, obviously quite strong Christian religious undertones. But I, f I feel whether you're religious or not, spiritual or not, um, a, a lovely story with very strong messages. And I do feel very sorry for the little girl, whether she has gone to heaven with her grandmother or not a tragic story really of poverty child poverty in this case um and and various other social issues but a beautifully constructed little fairy tale by hc anderson there i think i really hope you enjoyed it and as I did with the Emperor's New Clothes, I'm just going to have a little look at the Wikipedia page for the Little Match Girl as well. And it says, among other things, that the story about a dying child's dreams and hope was first published in 1845. It has been adapted to various media, including animated and live-action films, television musicals, and video games. And I honestly don't think I've seen any of these different versions. I have heard um, an audio 
reading of this by Ewan McGregor, which was quite nicely done. And I'm sure I will have had this read to me as a as a child, and maybe even read it myself. But I'm um, I'm very unfamiliar, I must admit, with so many of these adaptations that I'm just scrolling through here on the Wikipedia, and there are so so many. Please do leave me a comment if you're familiar with any of these, whether animated films, live action films even appearances in games and and literature. Like, I see that um, a reference features in Neil Gaiman's A Study in Emerald, for example. Um, It says the main characters view a set of three plays, one of which is a stage adaptation of The Little Match Girl. And um, a favourite novelist of mine, Terry Pratchett, there is a reference to The Little Match Girl in his 1996 book, Hogfather. And I've read a lot by Terry Pratchett, but I don't think I've read Hogfather, actually. Uh, but it says that it gave the story a less morbid ending, thanks to the intervention of Death himself. Death's manservant, Albert notes that the tale of the little match girl is meant to remind people that they could be worse off even when completely penniless. But with death currently acting as the hog father, the disc world equivalent of Santa Claus, disc world being um, Terry Pratchett's fantasy world throughout many of his novels, to compensate for the original's absence, he's able to use his current dual status to give the little match girl a gift of a future. Very nice. So I would love to know what your experience with the little match girl is. Is this the first time you've come across the story? First time you've heard somebody read it? Or is this an old favourite of yours in one way or another? I did run a poll a few weeks ago asking which H.C. Anderson uh, fairy tale you would like to hear me read. And at the time of me recording The Emperor's New Clothes, The Emperor's New Clothes was by far number one. Since then, I think more people have been voting for the other options, and The Little Mermaid has just snuck into first place. But the most commented other story, and there's been a lot of comments there, so thank you very much, was The Little Match Girl, so hence why I chose this, and also it felt very appropriate being in the winter, Christmas, New Year season as we are at the time of me publishing this video. But I will absolutely look to have a go at The Little Mermaid as well, and probably Thumbelina and the Ugly Duckling, which are my other options there, and I will probably have a bash at a couple of the other most voted for fairy tales um, that you've been mentioning in the comments. So, The Snow Queen, certainly. Perhaps The Princess and the Pea, and there's others mentioned there. Uh, The Tin Soldier, The Tinderbox. It would be lovely to work through quite a few of these little H.C. Anderson fairy tales, I think. So, thank you so much for sharing this little story with me. Please do leave me a comment with thoughts about this story, other H.C. Anderson stories, other things that you would like to hear me read. And if you would like to help support me and this channel and this content, please do consider joining my channel and becoming an official Fox fan here on YouTube. You can click the join button that's just below the video. Or even joining me over on Patreon. And you can access downloadable audio libraries and often have early access to new videos and content and whatnot as well. So thanks again for listening. You take care, and I'll read to you soon.